Hi, welcome back to my channel. This is Davis Lecture. And my last lecture about uh, for the course, Science Technology Society, I have presented to you the Copernican Revolution. But for today, we're going to discuss another revolution in terms of intellectual revolution that happens in the world. Okay, let me share my screen so that we can start this lecture. By the way, if you wanted to uh, check the previous lecture about the Copernican Revolution, please go ahead and check uh, my YouTube playlist in uh, Davis Lecture. All right, here we go. Uh, for today's lesson or uh, topic, I will present to you the Darwinian Revolution. Just uh, give you a heads up or just a little background. The Copernican Revolution existed approximately in the 16th century. And for this Darwinian Revolution, it existed approximately in the late or mid 17th century up until the mid 18th century. And to give you an uh, additional idea or a brief idea about in what is intellectual revolution is, it refers to a Greek speculation about the nature in the period before Socrates. And further, it will transform or this intellectual revolution transform societies through critical thinking, evaluation, and creating appropriate rules for equal opportunity. It is a continuous process of development to achieve the needs of society and the collaboration of great minds make the world peaceful and progressive. All right, so let's continue the slide. So as you can see there on your screen or in your cell phone screen, you will see that this theory is anchored on the evolution theory or what we call the Darwinian theory. This is um, established or created by Charles Darwin. And what this, uh, what this Darwinian revolution all about? The Darwinian revolution was considered to be one of the most controversial intellectual revolutions of its time. So there were lots of controversies about this theory that existed during this time, just like the same what happened to the theory of Nicholas Copernicus about the heliocentric model that the center or the focal point of the universe was the sun. So same thing happened with this kind of theory. And this theory, the Darwinian revolution or the theory of evolution by um, Charles Darwin, uh, according to the study of Chavez, or Chavez 2010, this is a scientific revolution, probably began uh, at the 16th century with heliocentric theory of the eminent astronomer Nicholas Copernicus, just like what I've discussed in my previous lecture video, but it was culminated with the masterful discoveries of Galileo Galilei and Isaac Newton at the 17th century. These two um, astronomers or scientists, Galileo and uh, Newton, revealed that, that the planet movements around the sun and other similar phenomena can be explained by simple mechanical laws of physics and astronomy, which has or which bring a support to the theory of Nicholas Copernicus, which is heliocentric theory or heliocentrism. However, the origin, complexity, and configuration of living beings remained in the mystery until the 19th century with the publication of this Origin of Species by Charles Darwin. Therefore, Darwin or Charles Darwin demonstrated that the origin of complexity of living beings or things can be explained by natural processes without the intervention of a supernatural being. Just like what you see on your screen, Charles Darwin stated that it is not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent, but the one that is most um, responsive or adaptive to change. 
that theory applies in the selection or natural selection process. Now, just what, uh, just like what you see on your screen, you will see there are three kinds of giraffe with the different heights, with the left side in here with a check and two X on the middle and on the right side. So what does this mean? What is it trying to explain or what is it trying to say? Basically here, in the natural selection and the adaptation theory by Charles Darwin, it is only the fittest who will survive. For example, not all giraffes have equal, or not all giraffes have equally long necks. Giraffes inherit their neck length from their parents. It is largely fixed by genes. So the measurement of the length of giraffe's neck is solely dependent on the genes which is being inherited from their parents. And uh, food that are easily accessed will be eaten by many animals and is therefore easily gone. It is happens, or it ha if this is happens, if this equation arises, giraffes with longer neck are more likely to survive. They can reach food that few others cannot reach. So in this picture, it solely explains that giraffe with longer necks are, have the more probability or chance to survive because they can reach food or they can reach these uh, um, leaves or trees which serves as their food. But with this uh, kind of giraffe that has short neck, they have uh, less probability or chances to live or survive in the environment because their physical features is not um, qualified or not adaptable, or they basically they cannot reach their food because of their short uh, measure of their neck. So this is what this um, picture says all about: that you only survive, you only survive in the environment if you have the uh, ability to adapt for these changes, for example, this one long trees, it requires long necks of giraffe. So those shorter neck with the giraffe cannot, or they don't have the ability to survive in the environment. So over the time, more and more giraffes came to have long necks. The short ones never made it to reproduction. They were gone. This is what we call the natural selection and evolutionary adapt or adap uh, adaptation. Okay, so let's proceed to the next slide. And just like what you can see here on your screen, Charles Darwin in his book on the origin of species, he introduced the theory of evolution, which posited the populations pass through a process of natural selection in which only the fittest would survive. So just like what we see in the recent slide, only those long giraffe with long necks can be able to survive in the environment. And those giraffe with short neck, they cannot make it through. And just like what you can see here in the picture. So the, there was an evolution of men um, that matched the current needs of the environment or the society. As you can see, there were innovation and um, adaption to the industry and trends. And lately there was a strive for a survival of the fetus when it comes to technology internet, just like what we have today, that education has been um, affected or influenced by this COVID-19 pandemic worldwide. So in that case, education or most of the education right now globally has been a, uh, um, uh, or has switched to online learning with the use of technology in order to still continue and provide education amidst COVID-19 pandemic. Okay, and just like this one, speaking about this um, adaptation or change in the environment in order to survive, um, recently or in traditional classroom without this uh, pandemic yet or without pandemic before, um, you can see an example that classes are being done in a traditional way in some parts of the world, especially in third world or developing countries. And today, even third world or developing countries had switched over or uh, they, uh, they had that paradigm shift into a uh, digital classroom with the use of technology and uh, still classroom or education is still going on without meeting face-to-face, -face, only through the use of technology. 
just like what we're doing, what we are doing right now. We're having a lecture through online or the use of technology. And then this, on this slide, Darwin and Revolution, in the struggle for survival, the fetus win and, and, the, ex, and the expense of the rivals because they succeed in adapting themselves to the best environment. So take note, this um, people or this kind of animals or uh, human beings or living things, they had succeed. So why they had succeed? Why, for example, why those long giraffe, long neck um, giraffe succeed? And even now we can still see them. And why is it that a short neck giraffe did not make it through? It is because that they were adaptable to change of, in the environment. And uh, speaking about this uh, society's engagement in the theory of Charles Darwin, the theory emerged at the time when most of the population believed and accepted that the biblical version of the Earth's creation. So mostly believe, still believe in the theory uh, or the divine theory of the evolution of man or the creation of man. However, there was a conflict between the divine theory and the evolution theory of Charles Darwin that people were divided. Some believed that the theory explained the origin of life, but religiously and faithful strongly refuted it. So the society has been divided. There was a um, people supporting the defined theory and also supporting the biological or the um, revolution or evolution theory by Charles Darwin. And for this theory, Darwinian revolution, it even marked or sparked a massive debate between science and religion. This theory started debates between the science and religion. It was only after some time that people came to understand that Darwin's theory of evolution was not in fact against the teachings of the church and both can coexist. Uh, same with the, the previous theory of, of Nicholas Copernicus. First, it was not accepted by the public, by the society, but later on they realized that this um, theory of Nicholas Copernicus could explain a lot of questions about the universe and about even about the earth and the day and the night. And the same things apply with the theory of Charles Darwin. It was first not accepted, but later on, people started to accept. Some of the, some, only some people started to accept, but there still, we still remain there in the divine theory or the teachings of the church. And that ends our um, short lecture for today for lesson two for um, intellectual revolution. And if you wanted to check for more uh, videos or lecture about Copernican revolution, you can check the previous video. And if you think this video is helpful about the um, Darwinian revolution, please click like below or you can subscribe so that you'll be notified for more videos that I'll be soon uploading in my channel. And uh, once again, thank you so much. And I hope to see you again in my next lecture video. Have a great day and stay safe.